We are back to write a fiscast on the killer mole concept. On the left of the screen there you can see a, a list of atomic masses. What it means is, for example, that an atom of nitrogen is 14 times heavier than a hydrogen atom. From these we can actually calculate the molecular mass, which I'm going to denote by the single symbol big M. Um, for example, here's a, a molecule, ammonia. That consists of one nitrogen atom plus three hydrogen atoms, so the molecular mass is 17. Another example, carbon dioxide, one carbon atom plus two oxygen atoms equals 44. That means, for example, that uh, um, a molecule of ammonia is 17 times heavier than a hydrogen atom. I'm going to show you two really important equations. So pay attention right this moment. Now, if I was to take m kilograms, that's the molecular mass in kilograms, of any substance, it will contain the same number of molecules. And that number of molecules is called Avogadro's constant. And I put that to the top right because it's very important. Um, and the symbol is N subscript A. That's one kilomole. Got it? That's what the kilomole is. Now, suppose in practice we didn't have big M kilograms, but just some amount of kilograms that we've weighed out. Um, and I don't know how many molecules I've got. I've got N. And I don't know how many kilomoles I've got. I've got N. These are the two important equations, two really interesting equations. Uh, if I want to get the number of kilomoles, I can, well, his, his, his a, uh, N, the number of kilomoles, equals M over N. Put that little box. For example, if the actual mass you take is half a big M, then you get half a kilomole. There's another way of doing this too. Not that you would ever know all the information, but in principle, this will be true as well. In practice, what happens is that you calculate the molecular mass, you weigh the amount of substance out, and then you know the number of kilomoles. Since you know, Avogadro's constant, you can work out the number of molecules, if you ever really needed to. For those of you who have studied chemistry, you may say, well, kilomole concept, um, I don't know that. I know the mold concept. It's the same concept. Except, for chemists use, and I'll do this for completeness, chemists use the mold where they have uh, the molecular mass in grams. So their Avogadro's constant is not 10 to the 26, it's 10 to the 23 because it's one thousandth less, and we call that one mole. I don't want to be dealing with moles, and the reason is very simple, because this gram is not the SI unit for mass, the kilogram is. So we're sticking with kilomoles. Um, where does this come in useful? Where does it come in practice for you? In, in, in several, several places. In kinetic theory of gases, you will often be asked to calculate the mass of one molecule. One molecule. I'll write it down because it's just one molecule. Very tiny amount. Well, what we do know is that um, if I take m kilograms, I have this number of molecules. Correct? Therefore, if I've got Na molecules in big M kilograms, then a single molecule, N0, must have a mass of M over N A. There you go. And because Na is a big number, N0 is going to be really, really, really tiny. The other place it comes into play is in idle gases. We have an equation PV equals N R T. And um, when you need to know the number of kilomoles of a gas, what do you do? This is what you do. You use that equation. 
you get the mass of the gas, you know the molecular mass, and then you can find out the number of kilomoles. And then you're done. This has been a Swinburne production.